them to hear, not what I'm going to say. Use me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's a word that, that so many of us don't even think about. It. It's taken from Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. I'm going to read you most of the reading out of the Amplified because I like the, the added words that it uses for description. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. You hear that when I said at the beginning there? Death and life are in the power of the a lot of times we don't realize it, but just in conversation with other people, you know, they can say, hey, how you doing? And you go, oh, I'm not feeling good. I got this wrong. I get that wrong. You're just cursing yourself. <laughs> don't ever speak ill of yourself or anyone else. Because what God says here is those words have power and they will come to fruition. And, uh, I got a couple verses here that he had showed me. And one of them comes out of Luke chapter 1. It's talking about where uh, before Jesus was born, you know, Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, was pregnant with John the Baptist. And I can get it here. Yeah, chapter 1, verses 5 through... And all the congregation was praying that now Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, was a priest. It says here, and all the congregation was praying outside in the court of the temple at the hour of the incense burning. And an angel of the Lord appeared to Zacharias, standing to the right of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw the angel, he was troubled and overcome with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, because your petition in prayer was heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. Well, if any of you know the story, they were both up in age pretty good. Elizabeth was barren. But the angel said to him, Yes, and then you will have great joy and delight, and many will rejoice over his birth, for he will be great and distinguished in the sight of the Lord, and will never drink wine or liquor, and he will be filled with and empowered to act by the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. He will turn many of the sons of Israel back from sin to love and serve the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him to the spirit of, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the obedience to the attitude of the righteousness, righteous, which is to seek and submit to the will of God in order to make ready a people perfectly prepared spiritually and morally for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, How will I be certain of this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in age. And the angel replied to him and said, I am Gabriel, I stand and minister in the very presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Listen carefully. You will be continually silent and unable to speak until the child is born. God stopped him from speaking evil over himself and his wife. No, oh, my wife can't be pregnant. She's barren. And she's old. And God said, Bless you. you're not saying a word. No more cursing yourself or your wife. Bless you. Thank you. And then when the day when John was born, his voice came back. We've got to remember, you know, that, that blessings and cursings 
we can speak them, and they will come true. So watch what you say. You know, and, and, and I think the biggest part of it is what we say about ourselves, mostly. God doesn't want us talking ill of ourselves. He created us in his perfect image. Sure, this body we live in has flaws. It gets old, it gets creaky, and, and achy, and stiff sometimes, and sore sometimes, and we get sick sometimes. But remember, everything it is is temporary. So why, why worry about it? Why, why talk about it? I got a couple more. I just got one for the rat. Okay, here, James, chapter 3. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body, and he who put bits in horses' mouths. That they may be, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body with that little bit in their mouth. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a fire kindles. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, a reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. Another scripture that I have tells you about where it comes from. Ah, here we go. Luke six forty five. Intrinsically good man produces what is good and honorable and moral out of the good treasure stored in his heart. The intrinsically evil man produces what is wicked and depraved out of the evil in his heart. For his mouth speaks from the overflow of his heart. So a lot of times when we speak, more, more times than not, it comes from what we're thinking, what, 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 how our heart is. So we got to make sure that our heart's right with God. That we're living in that, that purity that God intended us to live in. Purity of heart and thought. And when we see somebody, you know, struggling or whatever, and, and, and you might know their situation, and sure, they might have put themselves in that situation, but don't speak bad about them. Speak good. Pray for them. Pray for them. And yourselves, if you get up in the morning and you're all stiff and sore, don't say, oh, here's another day. I'm not going to be able to move. Because guess what? You probably won't be able to. Get up in the morning, and I know it's hard, but I sung a bit ago. I sing praises to the Lord. God inhabits the praises of his people. And when you praise God, no matter what the situation is, that praise can change that situation. Mm -hmm. So if you get up in the morning, you're all stiff and sore and can't move. Thank you, Lord, because I'm alive. I woke up this morning. You put air in my lungs. And I know things might not feel too good for me now, but by the end of the day, I will be great. Because I was born in your image. I was created in your image. And somebody, even if somebody you don't care for, because they just did something bad to you, bless them with your words. Say something kind, especially this time of the season. Everybody says, Christmas is a season of good tidings and good joy. Well, let's spread that good tidings and that good joy to other people around us and to ourselves and our family. You know, take some practice. I know 
I used to speak evil of myself. Oh, I can't do that. I got diabetes. Well, praise God, I don't have diabetes anymore. He cured me of that. He healed me. He gave me a new pancreas. So everything's working fine in there. But there's still times when I get up and I hurt. As a matter of fact, here it was two weeks ago. For probably a month, I was hurt. Could hardly move. I get out of bed. I had to slide out of bed. Because my back was so hard, I couldn't hardly move this way or that way. And it was after a Tuesday night prayer meeting. I brought Mary home. And on my way home, back down the summary from here, the Lord said, I want you to do a three-day fast. And me with my sarcasm sometimes, I said, you got to be kidding, Lord. I can't do a three-day fast. <laughs> See, there I am, speaking evil against myself. I said, no, I, I can do a fast. I struggle through a one-day fast. But if you want me to do a three-day fast, you're going to have to help me because I can't do it on my own. And at that minute, it felt just like God was tapping me in the back and saying, Good job, son. That's what I was waiting for you to say. I was waiting to hear for you to ask me to help you. Those three days went by. I didn't get hungry at all, which is unusual for me. <laughs> but then Saturday morning, after it was over, because it started at midnight, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, midnight, Friday night, it was done when I got up. Saturday morning, I got out of bed and bent over. To, I didn't hurt. It's like, thank you, God. That's nothing to obedience. Obedience. When we're obedient to what God asks us to do, things are going to be wonderful. But the main thing I wanted to talk on tonight, oh my goodness, I only got 15 minutes in, was the power of your tongue. And a lot of times it comes from the heart. So, I know myself, sometimes i got to pray, God, soften my heart. I don't want to be, you know, I, I'm not like the world anymore. That's right. So help me not to act like the world anymore. Put the, put the words of love and joy in my heart that they will come out of my mouth. For myself, for my neighbors, for even people that can't stand me, that are my enemies, so to speak. God, if God says it, he's going to do it. Yeah. And he tells us, you know, do not curse yourself. The power of cursing, blessing, it's all in the tongue, and it comes from the heart. <coughs> and I got a few, a little few bit, bit yet. I don't know, maybe I can stretch it out. Christ taught us that we need to do what we need to do is tame our tongues pay attention to what's in our hearts although he rebuked religious leaders in Matthew the truth is seen again in Luke make a tree good and its fruit will be good or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit you brood of snakes how could evil men like you speak what is good and right was talking to the Pharisees. For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. That was Matthew 12, 13, 33, which is almost identical to what I read in Luke. Yeah. Being filled with Christ fills your hearts with life. And James and Paul also tell us how to put the right things in our hearts. By letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3.16. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. And here it says, Dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, and slow to anger. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. 
every day when I read my scriptures, I ask the Lord to show me what he wants me to see in his word. And I might have read the same scripture 10, 15, 20 times. And he'll show me something in that scripture that I never saw before. That he wants me to see, that I need to see now, for today. He also helps us choose life and to tame our tongue through the help of the Holy Ghost. But the Helper, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. And he's done that with me plenty of times. There's been times when, when I've read something and I can't remember it, I cannot remember it for love nor money. And it's like, Lord, help me. And, he, and it'll come back to my memory right away. And I thank God for that, for his spirit that leads me and helps me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. That's out of Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Yet we must continue to build our most holy faith for our own benefit. Furthermore, continue to pray in the Holy Spirit. Remain in God's love as you look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus and Messiah, which brings eternal life. I'm going to step back here. Continue to pray in the Holy Spirit. That is something that, since I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, and I, I speak in tongues, and I pray in the Spirit, there's times when I, I know somebody needs prayer, but I don't know what to pray for. So I just start praying in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows what's needed even better than I could, could do. And I just pray in the Spirit. And it's like, I know everything will be fine. But finally, just remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And we can choose to speak life choice, just like everything else in this world. We can choose to speak life over ourselves, over our family, over our friends, and over our enemies. And maybe you speak life over, maybe they won't be your enemy anymore. Because there are people that are watching how you live, what you do, not just what you say, but what you do, and how you live your life. And someday they might come up and say, you know what? I turned my life over to Christ because I watched you. I saw how you are. And you never curse anybody. You never talk bad about anybody. You never, And, and you, you walk what you say. You do what you say. So I know myself, sometimes it's hard for me to witness to other people. But my life, I want to be the biggest witness. You know, of how I act and what I do yeah. and how I help. You know, I want that to make more of a difference than just what comes out of my mouth. Because sometimes I can stumble over my own tongue. But that's about all I have tonight. Amen. Praise just God. remember that we have a choice to speak good or bad. And if you speak bad, it will come true. And to speak truth, it will come true. God bless.